Okay, y'all. Uh, I think we're about to get... There he goes. Okay, hold on. We're going to try... So we've got a two-way going here. Let's see if we can get a three-way. Do I go to video or just audio only? Uh, we may have to go audio only for bandwidth. We'll find out. Uh, you tweak your audio levels. Not not you, call me. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, because I guess it's background. Yeah, you've got like what sounds like a lip, like it sounds like you got a Tesla coil going or something. <laughs> Are you are you conducting weird science? <laughs> okay, now let's try for an orgy. Okay then. Uh, yeah, we have been having endless problems with the new Skype since... I, I, I don't know what its problem is. It had... Me and J James were having an endless score of problems this weekend. It, it just, like, every five minutes it would cut us off or something. It was just... Uh. Okay, can everybody hear everybody and can everybody be heard? I can hear everybody. I can hear Commodore, but barely. This side, this is very clear. You have to. Uh, let me get my other microphone. Yes. I, I can hear you now. You just seem a little muffled. You sound muffled and low. <laughs> and turn the Tesla coil off. Yeah, I like it. I'll just, I'll just hold my hand if I, okay, I'll get a bunch of mics, uh, uh, tools, options, audio settings. I can hear the constant buzzing sound. Yeah, it sounds right. like you have a Tesla, Tesla coil running. Tesla coil. <laughs> Much better. For me. There we go. <laughs> no Tesla coil. Yeah, I haven't been keeping up with those things. Is it, is it really that much of an improvement, or...? Uh, yes and no. It's got a touchscreen in the front, a touchpad in the back, two uh, thumbsticks, um, camera up front, camera in the back. Uh, it goes with the UMD they dropped at. The battery is literally in the middle so you gotta screw out and take out a couple of things to get the battery out and it's got as short as a lifespan as the 3DS it's about four to five hours you know I don't know about these next gen gaming devices they're basically making for people our age because you know that's who they're targeted at they're meant for the 24 to 34 year olds it's like it's okay you can still play video games 40 hours a week it's like yeah. It's just, it's all about the games, really. It's not about the platform, it's about the games. And the Wii U's coming out pretty soon. Uh, uh, it's a bad name, I know. Yeah. You know, the Revolution was a better name, and they didn't use that. <laughs> well, there's... Cafe. <laughs> no, I... I, 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 I it just better not suck, because otherwise everybody's going to call it the something else you. <laughs> it's going to have a Dreamcast -like thing where it's going to have like um, this gimmick where your controls you have a display. <laughs> it's a touch screen, too. Yeah. Remember the VMUs? Those were awesome. Nice. It was about time for the next gen console. Uh, yeah, but I, we're, I don't. Th I think it's gonna be like a half gen run. We're gonna have like th these devices, but not a full run of next gen consoles, because there's really no reason, and who would buy them right now? So. Well, 
Yeah, because of like all the economy and stuff, and we we're having like a six year run in this generation, huh? No, hey, we're in the eighth generation. No, oh, no, you're even... in this generation. We're in the sixth year of this. No, one. we're in the seventh. Seventh year? Yeah, of the main consoles. Yes. Great. Seventh wow. generation. I still haven't replaced my PS2, but I did upgrade my video card. <laughs> Oh, they're never going to make those modular. I anyways, um... Uh, uh, okay, uh... I already covered this in the political feed, so I don't know if y'all want to cover this any. The whole Google and Facebook caught with their hand in the outsourcing jar. Google doing outsourcing? Uh, again, uh, working from China. No, I forget which country it was, but basically, like, the moderation and curation stuff that has to be done by a human being, you know, did, did, we, did we label all the porn right? Did we, you know, basically they're paying people a dollar an hour to go through and, you know, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, titties, does, does, no, guys. <laughs> you basically do curation jobs. And the uh, way it's going around the blogosphere, because it's an election year and everything else, is the whole outsourcing bad, Google taking American jobs, we need to investigate them. And the same thing for the Zucker Pope. Yeah, imagine ha having them run at 750 an hour, yeah. Well, it's uh, yeah. pretty costly. Um, I don't know what company Google's sending that curation through, but uh, curation jobs like this are available to Americans if they want them. But they pay like a penny a thing, or blah per thousand things, or a dollar. You know, basically the the equivalent pay for this work is twenty five cents to two dollars an hour. And I Americans seem uninterested. <laughs> well, yeah, when you have this little thing called minimum wage. <laughs> I'm gonna take it. No one's really that interested in that. Okay. Ugh. Uh, but where do you want to start? Or somebody else want to vote to start? I don't care. It's too... Let's start our guest, because I'm, it's usually you and me. <laughs> yeah, this, this pick a starting point. Tommy Baker, this and this one. Uh, let's talk about the Z1, the, the workstation has an all one. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird little computer there. Uh, it still doesn't have enough RAM s slots on it, but... Uh, it, it, it kind of, I'm like, hmm, this is the system I've been wanting to build for a while, so I may have to reconsider not liking Hewlett Packard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> basically what they've done is they've crammed a, a mid-tower that goes up into the Xeon series into an all-in-one form factor. And the screen just, you know, you lay it flat, fold it down, and the screen just pops open so you can get at all the guts and circuits and swap the video card and memory and, hard, and hard drives and CPU and whatnot. Um, so it's basically an all-in-one mid-tower. Uh, the price is a little sticky, but that's to be expected. It starts at 1800 They haven't released enough information yet on, like... If you buy this thing in a Xeon League, is it going to cost 5K or 15K? You know, it's... You know what, if Enterprises did this like six or seven years ago, do you think uh, the Mac Pro have been discontinued years ago and the iMac have been like this, but only being an iMac Pro or something? Honestly, this is what I have argued. All these unibody uh, devices have needed to be. The, you know, the, the all-in-one form factor that like the iMac is, little mini thing. You can go this seamless unibody design and still have this hinge where the thing comes open. And that's all, really all HP's done here. And there's, I, I had never understood why the industry hadn't done that. Because the people who are going to go in there and mess with the parts are the people who are going to go in there and mess with the parts. It's... I, 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 like I said, I don't like Hewlett Packard at all. They, yeah, I, they, they're mess with the parts. They're just gonna buy another. They're just gonna buy machines that they can mess with parts with. <sighs> yeah, that, that's. Uh, I mean, it's decent specs, and they are going up to the Xeon League. It's only got the one PCIe slot for obvious reasons. I'd prefer it had two. Uh, I would be interested to see how this system does in heat dissipation because I'm I'm noticing it's 
blowing all the heat up towards the screen. Which, I'm like... That could kill the screen. Maybe. Yeah, I'm like, okay, and the screen's one of the few parts in it that it's not straightforward to replace, because the screen's in that built-in hinge enclosure. So, it's like, yeah... I see dead pixels. <laughs> what did you say? I see dead pixels walking around like normal pixels. <laughs> no, that's, that's a new movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> do y'all think on this system? I mean, would you buy this, or do you think it's a nice novelty but not really for y'all? Pay me first and I'll get it. <laughs> what do you mean, pay you first? <laughs> no, it seems like a good enterprise thing. You know, uh, what do you think, Ben? I haven't seen it yet. I'm still waiting to get into Google Docs. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I see. You're in Google Docs, according to my thing. No, no, I had to... Oh, you uh, went out. I was finishing an installation. Um, yeah, so, um, Damn it, stop screwing around start. with Mountain Lion during the shows. No, it's <laughs> not here. Right. It's a, usually Java, this is a, a Java-based little program that required a restart. I know it's 10, so. Yeah, I was in <sighs> Java, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's over here. Oh, shoot, it just left. <laughs> then I just went it came back. Anyway. Should we just move on and we'll wait for him? Also, he was asking a question though before I see it, whether uh, you know Enterprise would like it. Enterprise likes anything that they can roll out uh, in mass very quickly. So it really um, is trivial. Uh, I would say the form factor, uh, so long as it's a, it's a reasonable form factor, it's not going to take up a whole lot of cubicle space or what have you, whatever the work office is. But if it's really easy to upgrade and the parts for it are are plenty and a lot of options. Well, I mean, it's standard. It's, it's standard. Really popular with enterprise. I mean, the parts cool. you would be upgrading are standard PC parts. You know, short of upgrading the power supply and the motherboard, it, it's, you know, standard uh, DDR3 RAM, standard serial ATA uh, hard drives, standard PCIe uh, graphics cards. Uh, most, most, most enterprise is not interested in the latest and greatest, or inter, if they have these you know mass rollouts, it's, not everybody needs the most killing uh, computer to do what they're. Yeah, they're the more to rock solidness is like okay, is this gonna last me a long time? Mm -hmm. So it's you know that it has to be. That when I was on the Continental Airlines uh, teams, I've done also Academy Sports and Outdoors back in the many years ago. They, they, their biggest thing was being able to get at the hardware, setting it up. It, it, everything was measured in, all right, if, if we're going to move from here to there, because uh, specifically for Continental Airlines, they were changing buildings. How, how long would it take to get these machines up and running? And then, the, of course, the software, the mass push of the mass off on these machines was also very critical. So uh, if it's easy to get at and they can do it and... They're gonna, uh, this would probably be popular because they don't have to do a desk with the with the, with the box on the floor or, or worrying about putting the box on the desk. Believe me, that was also a concern when you, when we moved uh, these big companies. The the users would leave little sticky notes. I remember on, on how they wanted it set up in their cubicle and all these things. So the less time to set up, even with cables and plugging things in, this would probably be a very popular option. And yes, I think you'd be right if Apple was something like an iMac that could be easily. Uh, like the screen comes out or the back pops out. I think we were Yeah, and it's like, really on all these all-in-ones, I, I have never understood why it doesn't either open in a sandwich like this one's doing, or the whole back plate just doesn't, like it doesn't just fold down and the whole back plate comes off to go swap, swap, yeah. swap, swap, swap. It, it, oh, yeah. it, they've been able to put systems together like this for the last seven years. They just haven't been. It's been one of those... It's, it's, it's insane because this is... You know, I, back in my day, I don't think the form factor technology was there at a reasonable price, but obviously today, I can see this being very popular. Look, I mean, there's nothing to plug in. You take it out of the box, they need maybe an upgrade of RAM, okay, you take off the back or something like that, put it back in, it looks like it's a wireless keyboard and mouse. I mean, yeah. It's like one, two, three, you're done. So, I, 
can I can see that uh, being very popular. The, the, the two markets, because this is clear. I mean, they're 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 selling this as a workstation because it's lacking the expandability slots. I'd put it more as a high end mid tower or or or, or tower replacement because a true workstation has like all the expansion well, slots. The definition I am made a YouTube video on that workstation definition is so has to do work. Yeah, I mean, essentially, now, workstation means it's not a, it's not a belonging to a user. In other words, users can come and go, but that station is essentially the function, and the user is just to have its beck and call for what it needs to, needs to do. Um, it doesn't need to necessarily, you're talking more of a pro machine. A workstation back in the old day was, yes, more professional, as in having all the slots, but now, a workstation as long as it's easy to upgrade, like what this is, it's obviously making a play and saying, look, you can open this thing up. You can upgrade it easily. You look at it, it, it goes into this diagram in this picture here where it even shows you how it's done. I think that's more of today's ex expectation of a, of a workstation. And especially now, external technology is becoming uh, a lot easier and, and as powerful as it was internally back in the day. Basically, it's an evolution of technology. Mm -hmm. Well, and honestly, or I hate to admit it, as we start to do more cloud side or server side syncing, where the stuff is not here, it's on the thing over there. Uh, what you care about here is your RAM, your CPU, and that you have a decent GPU. Not not that you have a whole array of them, but that you have a decent one, which the it's piece. Decent. <laughs> yeah, would. Well, with the PCIe on there, I mean, t 18 months from now, if what you need to do is rip the graphics cards out of all of these and upgrade them, you can. Hey, I just bought a 4-0 graphics card. It works pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, and, and, back, in, uh, back in the 80s, uh, graphics cards were kind of expensive. Yeah. Back in the 80s, Smartphones in the eighties, man. That's an oxymoron right there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, I, was it the nineties? <laughs> no, they had. No, no, you're thinking of um, Windows uh, and the invasion in the in the late eighties, just before the nineties. We had the invasion of the Newton and the Palm. Yeah. Oh yes, the Newton. <laughs> I, the Newton was like 88, 89, wasn't it? Or was that 93? Oh, that the thing that, uh, that Tom Carter used to have in 18, was it called the Atari Portfolio? Yeah, but that was 90s. Ah, uh, yes. No, it was 89. It was 89. Okay, okay, yeah. It's like, wait, the, yeah, yeah, it was like, it was like late 80s. 88, 89, we started to see a surge of them, and then, uh, the law of doubling took over and it just, oh, we got flooded with them. You know what? It was the Slates 1.0. That's what it was. <laughs> Everything is 2.0. I remember, like, uh, what was it? Dragon, was it Dragon? Something Dragon language, I think it was. Like, uh, was symbol technology and all this other stuff that became popular, too. But, uh, anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, though, the, uh, Nintendo had come up with another device, uh, called the handheld. Well, it, Nintendo wasn't the first one there. There was actually another company. But, you know, theirs were the most popular. And back then, the two, you know, phones and handheld gaming were just two separate things. But fast forward to today. Oh, oh yeah, you're saying, okay, they, they suck back then because they weren't phones. There were smart because there were PDAs, but if you wanted to get a cell phone here, you had to get a cell phone. Well, we didn't have the computing technology to really have these things handle multiple things. We just couldn't fit that many circuits in there. Yeah, it, but now today, uh, handheld gaming like Nintendo and smartphones have combined into one. I, I, I honestly do see before this decade's over all the video game industry getting gobbled up by the smartphone industry and they're gonna go they're gonna go the Sega route. They're just gonna become we're a vendor of these titles. Well, I mean the consoles are gonna still be around for a while, the big consoles, but the handhelds yeah. are get, disappearing. Get, game That's Boy why. and the equivalents are gonna go bye bye. They're gonna get absorbed into the smartphone thing. Yeah. That's why uh, I mean for now, this generation, the three DS is gonna be fine, but with the 
PS Vita coming out, I don't think it's going to do so well. I mean, yeah, the PS Vita has nice graphics and all, but it, the smartphone's going to kill it. Well, what, what they're going to have to do to survive, but that'll cannibalize them in the long run, is they're going to have to start selling their devices with either Android or Windows or WebOS so they do more than just be a gaming device. Well, that's just it. Uh, the PS Vita has Android. See, that's the thing. As soon as they start doing that, then it's like, well, why don't you just put your stuff over here on the phone I buy from Verizon or AT&T or Sprint or... or <laughs> Sony already has their like PS Vita. They have like two versions: the Wi-Fi and the G3 version. And it's standing like, dude, this thing is a gaming console, but you're trying to sell it off as a kind of in, as a uh, internet G3 gaming console. What? Well, that's why it's internet connectivity with um, online gaming. Well, no, and, and the thing that kills them on that is why Android and all the mobile platforms have plenty of voice over IP solutions because of the bandwidth cap things. You're kind of forced to buy the grandma phone plan. So one of two things is going to have to give, either the bandwidth caps or they're going to have to give their stuff to the smartphones. <laughs> it, either way, it's... No, it, those bandwidth caps aren't going anywhere. The Nintendo 3DS at least knows what it is. It's just the Wi-Fi version, but, you know, in next gen, they're going to have to make a phone or just put all their, uh, put Mario and all their games and port it onto a, uh iPhone and an Android. And there's just no way. Well, and, uh, honestly, I've said this a long time. If they're smart, what they'll do is they'll go both the smartphone route and the console where you have to buy an application to get access to the library and either make that a subscription or an expensive application. And honestly, gamers would pay 20 to 50 for that. And that's literally no cost for them to do other than to make the software and just redistribute it a few thousand million, however many times. But the gaming consoles, the big ones like the Xbox and all that, they're going to be fine for a while. Yeah. I yeah, I, I, I have a. Yeah, I can agree that, that I think is. Uh, I don't. I hate using the term smartphones because now I think of a phone as just a side. Uh, I, you know what? As somebody who's been working on a site trying to make it behave with a mobile device, I can tell you they're anything but smart. <laughs> I don't think of phone being like the dominant. It's it's a it's a, it's a smaller form factor with a, a limited software set, essentially, and I I think. As long as the bandwidth is controlled by cell carrier, carriers universally, that uh, what smart? Like really? <laughs> <laughs> well, not so much the smart. I just the, the phone. Phone. I think the phone part of it is going to become less and less of of the concern. And, and yeah, the phone's going to be secondary function. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's but, that. Yeah. It, it, well, uh, uh, let me ask a question here. On that note, how many of y'all know at least three people who don't even have a phone line? You mean they don't have a hard line? No, they don't have a phone line at all. Like from their home, they just rely no, on No, they, they have no cell phone, no VoIP line, no nothing. They're like, I have Skype, I have IM, you know, everybody who knows me has access to these things. I don't need a phone, and they don't have a phone. I don't know one person that doesn't have a phone. I, I, I know at least three that I deal with on a regular basis. It, it, no, this is like help. One of these people is a programmer. Yes. Books over IP voice. But yeah, it's short of going universally. Uh, but yeah, like voice over IP, where um, I give credit to Jobs as wanting it to begin with that came out in that, that book where he didn't even want to deal with carriers. I mean, that's a that's a noble enterprise. I think to try to circumvent the carriers. But how are people? I'm not a big console gamer, but from what I understand, console gamers love to, 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 to participate on as teams and groups. You know, communication with each other with with audio and visual. Sometimes they can see each other and say, "Oh, you just got boned or whatever." And all of that over a cell network is just going to be extremely too expensive. And even if even if gaming platforms tried to make proxy servers where they tried to do some of the processing off to, to you know, make the packets as small as possible is still going to be very expensive. So I see these very much based within the home or some place that provides a lot of Wi-Fi. And then the, my next question is: Is if that's the case, do we really want to sit on the couch with such a small form factor device 
uh, in your in these places of Wi-Fi um, versus something more practical and I think more entertaining. Obviously, we like to be entertained, and big TVs are getting bigger and bigger, if I'm not mistaken. So if we're with, if we are pinned into si inside of Wi-Fi areas only, why are we choosing uh, these little gimmicky devices like tablets to be the predominant gaming platforms? Is that the light bulb? No, uh, uh, actually, I think of it, there's a simpler answer. It's because they can't have that capability, so they'll do it. But even on even on RIM, every tablet now that's out there, even on the BlackBerry Playbook, the top apps are games. I mean, everything is it's like, okay, so people are spending, uh, at least on the iPad, most people on the iPad either sits on the table and does nothing, or it's all about games. Also with the iPad... You're just a fanboy. All you do is play games. That's all you play. So you're spending six hundred dollars um, to play essentially games, and oh, okay, can do. My my favorite one was somebody who bought a MacBook Pro and was playing Angry Birds and complained that the MacBook Pro mouse sucked. So they went and bought another mouse. So they could play Angry Birds right on their MacBook Pro. And I'm like, wow. So I just want to, I, I, I still am of the belief that tablets are going to reorganize into, into niche markets. Um, and and that the consoles uh, will, they'll, they'll do whatever they're going to do. But I, 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 sort of us making, in the United States at least, a, a Wi-Fi ubiquitous everywhere. And not having to worry about cell carriers. Well, there are cities who are trying to do that. I know there are. Now, outside the United States, I hear, like in Sweden, you know, it's like pff, bandwidth is a joke and who cares. You get, it's like 30, 30 up and 30 down or whatever and, 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 and there's no problems like one flat feet. But that's not the case in this country. Mm -mm. So, so I can't, I can't, I, I still see the tablets and their current use and everything as, a, as very much a fad. Well, yeah, everybody yeah, that I talk to is like, they're like, why do you want an iPhone? Well, it's cool. I get well, that answer. I swear I want to take a video camera to a mall. And I say, well, why do you like this? If there's something else. Well, it's cool. It's a thing to have. You know what? <laughs> ben, I think that I think you just volunteered for our first in the field video. You yeah. should do that. You should go to the mall with a video camera and just question them randomly. <laughs> It, but you know what? That's a very profitable place to be. Companies want to make money, and every company would kill to be cool. Because it doesn't matter if your product's garbage, people are going to buy it. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Ben, uh, yeah. also look at it like this. When the uh, uh, Nintendo had their DS, uh, their original DS system out before they mm -hmm. came up with the Nintendo 3DS, sales were skyrocketing. And then something happened, and their sales dropped. And what happened was Apple released the App Store, and games started becoming available for the uh, <laughs> iPhone and iPod Touch, and Nintendo felt it. Oh, I believe it. it, I, it I, 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 but I'm saying I still think that these tablets are still very much in a, in a, in a, as a fad phase. Now, you, you spoke of the... I'm not very familiar with consoles, but I'm assuming those 3D and 3DSs are like Nintendo type gaming things? Well, it's the Nintendo 3DS. Is that a handheld? Yeah, yeah it, it, it's handheld, but I mean, it's... The thing with those is it's it's a console-like gaming experience. I mean, you're playing old N64 games on the 3DS, for crying out loud, so... Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I, I still think consoles and even, and even uh, the PC market, as far as gaming is concerned, are, are going to continue to do with you know what they do and I think it makes sense that you know, like Xbox is trying to provide a media center and not, isn't it Netflix participates with them and Hulu and yeah. I think on the PlayStation and all that so they're, they're all gearing up to actually participate on your 62 inch TV with surround sound and all this other crap that people like to see a a actually on Netflix and Hulu both of them get that for them to survive, they need to be available just kind of everywhere. Now, them trying to convince the people they get the content from of that is a different matter. Because I, you know, it, it's clear Netflix is in a boxing match with all the DVDs they have access to to get permission to stream them. Uh -huh. And the same thing with Netflix. They got, but USA, you want them to be able to stream it to all their devices and not have to go to USA.com. Stop making them do that! <laughs> Got any licensing problems there? 
Uh, they do with the few companies that they are done to buy. <laughs> and it shows, and they're at a pissing match with each other, and it really does show. But you know what? I like this battle that's going on for content, because I really hope one day we have a la carte TV. Uh, that would be a very nice thing. But you know what's funny? I get a side story. I'm, I'm talking about Form Factors Entertainment Center. Uh, well, there was a show I did way back. I don't know if it was on Skype or something. That I wanted to sell my Call of Duty for because I was. Uh, everybody knows I'm a Rainbow Six fan, right? Um, but it, I hated the, the controlled storyline of Call of Duty Four. Well, this latest Call of Duty came out, uh, and, and my friend has this enormous TV with like the most sophisticated surround sound system. Now, let me tell you, when you are in his living room playing that thing, it's awesome. <laughs> now, I can't I can't recreate that here. You know, I don't I don't have all the money to chunk in, you know, entertainment and stuff like that. Besides I don't even get my kids monopolize the television anyway. So so Well you don't you don't wanna hear SpongeBob and Dolby Digital? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. It's, 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 it, right, right now it's the wiggles and everything, but it's so enjoyable in, in, in my at my friend's apartment that in, that that experience and that you're immersed in it that might I mean goodness I fire off a round and I felt like I'm back in the damn Marine Corps and shit you know with the <laughs> ground shaking and shit the floor shakes and the round nice <laughs> but it wasn't in the south of the you know what I mean <laughs> well uh, uh, first of all uh, Hulu's now on the Wii by the way but that's not important uh, but oh shit I forgot what I was going to say um uh, they're trying to make the TV into the next gaming console, failing miserably. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Is it because the television vendors want control, or, or what? Uh, they're having problems with their controllers. Uh, well, uh, it, a long time ago, uh, <laughs> Philips came up with a, a console called the CDI, and it was a massive flop because the people who built it did, uh, basically built it like a VCR system. Yes, and I know the thing you're talking about, yeah. Well, the controller plugs into the back of the thing. It's like, okay, so if I want to plug in this controller for my games, I have to literally pull out this device and plug it straight into the... Well, and the thing that was confusing as hell about that device is there was a controller port on the front, but it was for player two only. <laughs> oh, God, this yeah, Are so you okay with that? Even non-gamers hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Uh, well, but you know, I know what you're talking about, because I mean, I'm looking here at the stupid Roku remote here. Well, you and know what the re basic remote was? A remote control. Yeah. Which is okay, wait, I want to... Control. Okay, so this, I guess, are you telling me that... I, I guess I'm kind of confused. So is it not good enough right now to have the console plug into the TV? Are you well, saying that it's all integrated into one? Or yeah, it, it, it's what we were talking about the other day, but this, like, do you want your TV to be a dumb monitor, or do you want it to be a smart all-in-one system that's your all-media solution, where it's your DVR, your game system, your, t your everything? It's not going to happen. I mean, for a small uh, audience groups, maybe like Mr. Bit and them, it will be good, but for the larger audience, it won't sell. Well, who it's targeted at is people who have the Apple mindset of the all-in-one. I, don't, I, I wouldn't go for an all in one TV. I like to have my things modular, especially because it, it happens. You have one piece that fails, but your other stuff keeps running. If everything were in the damn TV, I'd hate to think that that's one weak link in the system and, and then all of my services are out. So. Well, I see it as our future, but it ain't going to happen like overnight. And it's, yeah, I it could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's why you get an iMac, because, okay, if your webcam have a crap down, you're like, okay, send, it, send the whole computer back to the Apple store. It's like, no! Well, here's the only way I see that happening, where if they figure out a way to make it, they basically turn the TV into a computer, and instead of it being hardware, it's all software-driven, which means they can, they can, yeah, that's what they're doing. But the thing is, if you look at the software for these things, it's not quite there yet. It's very clear that whole industry needs the help of some very talented UI people. Oh, I, the worst was uh, Samsung was releasing their set of TVs, and they're like, we got Android on this TV with Angry Birds. And the guy's like, well, what do I use to play Angry Birds with? And he's holding up a basic yeah, the only the only TV experience of Angry Birds I've seen that got it right was Roku because basically the remote for Roku is a Bluetooth gyro remote. Yeah, 
I've never even played Angry Birds, so I can't. I had until I got a Roku, and I wish I never Angry had. Angry Birds is, a new, is Tetris 2.0, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. Man, I, Go ahead. Basically, all you're doing is just flipping birds at a bunch of pigs. Yeah, 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 you, you, your point is to go kill the evil piggies with the angry birds as ballistic wow. weapons of mass destruction. Some of them blow up, some of them turn into shotgun pellets, and some of them are just mm, uh, gauntlets of doom. <laughs> and this is the problem. Uh, the, X, the thing like the Xbox, you know, I, I mean... Oh shit! I'm, I lost my train. You, know, you remember the Apple TV, right? Yeah. It did yeah. completely fail. It's not small. It's an oxymoron. Exactly. Common those. Apple TV is an oxymoron, but yes. Well, and you know what's funny about that? Basically, what the Roku is is it's an Apple TV if it had Hulu and way more fucking channels. And I think about that for a minute. What they did right was they didn't call it TV. They just called it some little nonsensical word. And they basically made it a content-on-demand device instead of trying to trick people into thinking it's a television. It's like, no, it's a la carte on demand. Different concept. <laughs> well, but here's the, here's the real problem. Those two devices won't sell. They're not going to sell. Because the Xbox and the PS3 are pretty much dominating the, the market that they're trying to get into. And the reason well, why they can do it. it. Uh, I, I bought a Roku. Well, well just... I think this, I guess that's a good thing. You know, I, I actually would like computing to get more into consoles and, and television, predominantly because I like the architecture hardware that they use. It, like, take memory, that's for example. Just good. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of TVs. Okay, and hackers. <laughs> and XDR2 and all that. And XDR smokes DDR3 and everything. I mean, you have, you're talking about serious amounts of, of bandwidth on XDR memory. Well, speaking of and, words, uh, uh, the new, uh, the new, the 7000 series AMD card is using XDR RAM. Good old yeah. RAM. Oh yeah, RAM bus is awesome. I mean, it, it, I think that if we go that direction, we're going to get more, we're going to get closer to more parallel computing, true parallel computing, uh, and, and, and things will, will get a lot faster than this shit we're stuck with with. Yeah, we're just adding cork on stuff, and now we're just adding it. We're making the root I think we're going backwards with these damn mobile operating systems sometimes. You know, oh, just one button. How fun. Well, hey, uh, you know what? You bring an interesting point there. Is the whole reason for dumbing down the... Is the whole is the whole reason for making the computer dumber is so they can make the console seem smarter? What are you saying? This uh, uh, Metro is now on Xbox, by the way. Is it? They, they, they changed their whole desktop and now the whole metal. I don't mind so much Microsoft they get this right. I like Microsoft's ideology in principle that they want a full-blown OS on all devices versus Apple saying, oh, we're piecemealing. This is a little happy device with this limited set of software. And here's, you know, now they're not even calling it Mac anymore. So here's just OS 10 over here. And, oh, iCloud will bridge the gap. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, what about the Keymaster? <laughs> we'll get into that in a little bit because that's another discussion in and of itself. Well, uh, what, what I was technically trying to say is that if companies want to get into everybody's living room with the uh, with the all-in-one media device, they're going to have to make a gaming device. There's no I other way. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Games to sell. Let me tell you, that's that is the dominant. I, I, I what this this what you bring up would be an interesting thing. Would be if. And this is honestly, I think, what Microsoft is trying to back there. Because Microsoft is very clear they're trying to make their solution work on both Windows computers, the Xbox system, and they're going to be going to cable providers and TV makers and trying to get them to sign. It would be interesting to see, uh, like, Sony start building the PlayStation framework into Sony TVs and so on and so forth. Like, basically, they're like, you can either have the console, the separate unit, or you can buy one of our TVs that has it built in. Uh, yeah, right. and this is where Apple's failing, because Apple TV's not going to sell. They have to make a gaming device. Oh, uh, Apple TV it. sells to its legions, its own little disciples. Nope. Yeah, but that is it's, it's, Yeah, I, I know, but if you go to the shelf in the Best Buy where the Apple TV is, you're sitting there, and you have eight devices next to it, all of which do more for the same price or less, yeah. and you honestly wonder... 
I, why is anybody buying? You know, people are buying Apple TVs, but you're like, why? You know, <laughs> I know every every Apple, every Apple person that now they now their new argument was ninety nine bucks. Um, but no. it used to be it's like, look, I have a Mac Mini as a video server, and that thing is from two thousand six, and it's still pumping HDL, Mac ten eighty, but. It's still pumping HD out, and it does everything I need to do. It's got internet, all of it. It's got a, a tuner. And why the hell do you have this little box? It doesn't even, I mean, does it record TV for you? Oh, you're stuck on iTunes. No, no, what the box yeah. is about is what you say you want, a la carte, on demand. The problem is the Apple TV, uh, unlike the other devices it's competing against, has not jacked into as many content sources. They they did they basically have Netflix and they're I missing. Yeah. They're missing yeah. everyone else. They, they don't even have Hulu on the Apple TV. I mean, yeah. well, here's the thing: the Nintendo Wii is now cheaper than uh, is getting cheaper than the Apple TV is. Mm -hmm. and it's got Netflix and Hulu now. Yeah, that's the thing. Almost every other solution who's trying to take that niche has both Netflix and Hulu, and most of the ones aside from the game consoles not only have Netflix and Hulu, but have at least 20 other content providers. Most of them have over 100. And it's like, it, it, I'm sorry. I mean, we, uh, we're uh, Real Genius is not on Netflix or Hulu, but it's on Crackle. It, it's... <laughs> I have a question. Next, the next Xbox is it going to have Windows 8 on it, or is it still a proprietary OS? Uh, well, actually, it'll probably have Windows 8, but you have to understand uh, the Xbox uh, Seven, uh, Xbox 360 was kind of Windows NT. Interesting. I know. Yeah, I've not researched enough about the kernel, so down and stuff where you can't install from outside the uh, the market. Well, but see, they've already set it up for that because with Windows 8, the ARM version is locked down to the marketplace. So all they really got to do is make an ARM-based, make the 720 an ARM-based system, and it's another ARM-based device where it's Windows. Yeah, it doesn't even need to be ARM. I don't think they're going to use ARM for gaming. Uh, gaming. I, I, I'm not sure that the ARM architecture. Is, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure the ARM architecture is quite ready. Uh -huh. Yeah, for, it's getting expensive, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah well, but when's um, the 720 supposed to come out? Is that next year or the year after? Or two years. Uh, no, 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 not two years. By then, uh, uh, Nintendo Wii U will be killing it in sales. And so you really, you're really you thinking we're going to have a console revision sale? next year? But the Dreamcast came for us, that help them. Uh, that's a different story, San, uh, uh, Commodore. Dreamcast came way too early. It only came about two years before the PS2. But it was it was way too early. Basically, if you look at the Dream... I had a Dreamcast. Here's the problem with the Dreamcast. Aside from four launch titles, there wasn't one game made that took advantage of it. And that was because it was just... It, you, if you made a game that took advantage of what the Dreamcast was capable of doing, you were making a game you could sell to like 10% of the market. So nobody made... It, that was its problem. And it... it, it, it it's, it killed it. Not that many good imports from Japan either. Well, and well, not only that, uh, um, Sega didn't even wait for like uh, eight years before they released it. They were releasing like four consoles before it, like every year. Mm -hmm. Ever since the 32X came out, the, they came out with the 32X, then they came out with the Sega Dream. Uh, no, uh, Sega Saturn. They had, Sega no, Sega, Saturn. that was the thing. I was glad, honestly, when Sega got out of the console market and went into the software market because they never had follow-through with their consoles. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, but then again, they made crappy solid games for the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> Man, I, 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 I listen to all you guys. I just must have missed out on life. It, 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 it's like a generational thing. A, a, a spawn of the 80s. We were the video game generation because we got to grow up with it being revitalized. It died and came back for us. <laughs> well, it, well, the, the company that was responsible for killing the video game consoles and gods and that. There were a the few of those. The game crash in 1983 was Atari. And Apple and Microsoft. That, yeah, that's how I, what I had as a kid. Atari with those rubber, very tall rubber... Black yeah. uh, joysticks with a red button on top. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, the 2600. 
I don't even know the model names. It's my, but I, I never owned an Atari. I owned a first Nintendo, but I, ne- I always, I kept, a, a true story, the only reason why I even had a game console when I was a kid is my dream was to fly down the trench, the trench of the Death Star and blow it up. So, <laughs> So, uh, wait, 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 you I, said I, you I, had I one. Of... I went after these game consoles, and none of them did it until, I can't remember, was it a Sega, I want to say, that my friend had. The graphics were awesome, and I could fly down the damn trench and blow up the dead, and that was it. I was done. Until many years later, I started getting into <laughs> Wait, 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 Bit, you said you had one of the first, Ni- life, you know? Bit, right. you had one of the first Nintendos. Dude, did yeah. you have the Nintendo robot? Oh god, that saved that saved uh, video games in America. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Nintendo I had. It came with Zelda or something, and I hated it back then because you had to like properly remove the cartridge because if you didn't, you'd lose like all the levels you just did or something. You know what I did? I just left the thing on and just using Nintendo Power. That's yeah, I no, <laughs> that that was how I eventually beat Mario Brothers. But this is also how I learned about air cooling because. You know, you're a kid, you have your Nintendo on, and you, you can't save, so you have it running 24-7, and there's a little device that's not made to run 24-7 that eventually overheats, so you, you start, you start like, turning it upside down so the heat can dissipate, and putting box fans on. Like, you can tell the true NES system gamers, because their cooling system for their Nintendo became increasingly more and more elaborate. <laughs> Well, I cleaned out, I, I beat Mega Man, like, uh, it took me like a week or two weeks to beat it. It's like, yeah, I finally beat it. I, I, I left the thing on the whole freaking time. I was like, I got rid of it. I beat it like two years ago, like, uh, right around uh, Halloween time. It's like, yeah, that just left it on, but it was so freaking hot. And it, it didn't overheat. Well, uh... Mexico, it depended if you were in the north or the south. <laughs> uh, Mexico had an interesting way of saving. They had to save your progress. You had to have the codes. Yes! Yeah, like you got to a point and you got a code. And you know what? Since we're on the That's NES, I, 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 I want to send a shout out to anybody who's watching this who remembers the NES. And if you've watched this far into the video, because this is probably going to wind up being one, maybe two parts. You're going to have to watch at least 30 minutes, if not more, to get to this point. But anybody who bothered to beat Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or at least get to the point where you saw the Techno Drone. <laughs> I've done the stupid part with the, the stupid, uh, you know, the sea wing kept on freaking killing you. It's like, uh, what the fuck is this game? Because oh, that, 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 talk about a ridiculously hard game. <laughs> like... That game was unplayable by my standards. I just... I, died just, I, mean, I didn't even know there was a techno drone until other people told me because I got to like level two or three and I was always down to like one or two turtles and, and it was like like ah! <laughs> 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 Yeah, that was like the first game I ever played. 